Alrighty, so today we're going to be having a look at cubics. And in this particular case, we're just going to look at can we solve for a generic cubic? Not given three points, given four points. Now, why do we need four points for a cubic? Well, the general form of a cubic looks like this. y is equal to ax to the 3 plus bx squared plus cx plus d. That's what a generic cubic looks like. Now, because it has 1, 2, 3, 4 coefficients, or things we don't know, we need to have four pieces of information to help solve it. So, these are the four pieces of information we've got. We know that it goes through negative 1, negative 14, that it goes through 1, negative 6, that it goes through 2, comma, negative 5, and it also goes through 0, comma, negative 5. And we're going to try and fit a cubic to this shape. Alrighty. So what do we do? Well, we just substitute each of these in, and we're going to get four different equations. So let's start with the best one to do, which is this one here, subbing in 0. If we can never sub in 0, we always do. So sub in 0, comma, negative 5. So negative 5 goes on the left, and we get a times 0 to the 3 plus b times 0 squared plus c times 0 plus d, which is 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus d, which means that d is equal to negative 5. So we now know the first piece of information, that d is equal to negative 5. And through all of the rest of the substitutions, we're going to be using that piece of information. So let us carry on. Let's substitute in our next point. Let's start with the negative. So negative 1, negative 14. Negative 14 is equal to a times negative 1 to the 3 plus b negative 1 squared plus c negative 1 minus 5. So we already know minus 5. It's one piece of information we don't need to search for. Alrighty, let's simplify this a little bit. We're going to get negative 14. A, uh, negative 1 to the power of 3 is negative 1. Negative 1 times A is minus A. B times negative 1 squared is just plus B. Uh, C times negative 1 is minus C, minus 5. Add 5 to both sides, and we're going to get minus 9 is equal to minus A plus B minus C. And that is going to be our first equation. Let's get our second equation, sub... 1 comma negative 6 into our equation we get negative 6 equal to a times 1 to the 3 is just a plus b times 1 squared well it's just b plus c times 1 it's just c minus 5 add 5 to both sides we get minus 1 is equal to a plus b plus c dot 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 that's our second equation third equation sub 2 comma negative 5. So we get negative 5 on the left hand side is equal to a plus b plus, oh sorry, a times 2 squared, uh, 2 to the 3 plus b times 2 squared plus c times 2 plus minus 5. Add 5 to both sides, get 0 on this side. Now, 2 to the power of 3 is 8, so we get 8a. 2 squared is 4, 4b. Four 2 times c is 2c. And we're done. So these are our dot, 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 1, 2, and 3 equations. And the first thing you're probably going to notice is that the third equation is the most annoying to deal with. However, we can simplify that just one step. I can notice that all three of these have got a factor of 2 in them, which means I can divide both sides by 2. 0 divided by 2 is 0. 8a divided by 2 is 4a. 4b divided by 2 is 2b. 2c divided by 2 is c. And now I've got a much nicer to work with third equation. So let's clean up all of the substitution and have a look. Alrighty, so we now have three equations with three variables. So it's almost like we were solving the quadratic from earlier. Step one, we need to get two equations with only two variables. Now C is hanging out on the end here and looking pretty ripe for the eliminating. So I'm going to combine 1 and 2 to get rid of C, and then I'm going to combine 
2 and 3 to get rid of C as well. But in this case, rather than subtracting, I don't need to. If I add minus C to plus C, well, that's going to cancel it in one go. So let's start off by adding... Mm. No, we'll do 1 and 3. The smart thing to do would be to do 1 and 2, 1 plus 2. I'm not going to do the smart thing because sometimes you can't do the smart thing. And you can see why it's the smart thing to do. Kudos to you, but we're going to make it harder for ourselves just for a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to combine 1 plus 3, and then I'm going to combine 2 and 3. That's going to be my two ways of getting around it. So 1 plus 3. Well, 1 plus 3 is going to be minus 9 plus 0, minus 9, minus a plus 4a is 3a, b plus 2b, and minus c plus c is no c, which is the whole point. Dot, 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 4. I might edit 4 in a moment, but anyway, there's my fourth equation. Now for my fifth equation, I'm going to find 2 and 3. Now for this one, I'm going to have to do a subtraction. I'm going to do 3 take 2. So, c mi uh, sorry, 0 minus minus 1 is 1 equals 4 minus a is 3a, 2b minus b is b, c minus c is 0c, which is exactly what we wanted, dot, 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 5. Ah, now this is perfect because I've got 3a here and I've got 3a here. So if I subtract these two, I'm going to get rid of a. So let's do that. 4... Uh, 5 is bigger, so we'll do 5 minus... Oh, no, 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 I take it back. 4 minus 5 is probably the best. 4 minus 5. So minus 9 minus 1 minus 10 equals uh, 3a minus 3a, 0a. 3b minus b is 2b. And so I'm left with b is equal to negative 5. Alrighty. So I now worked out B. Now I need to sub B back into my favorite of these two equations, which is probably going to be number 5. So sub B equals negative 5 into equation 5. We get 1 is equal to 3A minus 5. Add 5 to both sides. 6 is equal to 3A. Divide both sides by 3, and we get A is equal to 2. So we've now worked out A, B, and D. The only thing I don't know is C. So I need an equation that has C. And I've got three to choose from, one, two, or three. I like the look of two. So let's sub A equals two, B equals negative five into equation number two, because equation two looks pretty nice. It's just A plus B plus C on the right-hand side. So it's going to be negative one is equal to A plus B plus C, two plus negative five. So 2 minus 5 plus c, 2 minus 5 is negative 3 plus c, add 3 to both sides and we get 2 is equal to c. So we've now worked out all of our terms and we can now write our full polynomial ax to the 3 plus bx squared plus cx plus d. So you need 4 points because you've got 4 variables and we got a was equal to 2, b was equal to to negative 5, c is equal to 2, and d we worked out right at the top is also equal to negative 5, right up the top up here. And that's the equation. Now to just confirm it, I'd recommend jumping onto Desmos, typing this in, typing in the four points, and checking that they all meet. A little bit hard to see, but you can see here that all one, two, three, four points are on this equation. So it did work out just perfectly. Alrighty, see you in the next one. Goodbye.